but you'll have like a thousand deadly stares in the back of your head. If someone says you look tired, it basically means you look like crap. I put the milk in before the hot water in a tea and I was like, Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I am Yvette and I moved to the UK in May this year and I'm documenting all of my firsts and kind of my experience moving abroad and experiencing British culture for all that it is. Um, so I thought it might be good to go over that since there seems to be a few new people around because we have hit 3000 subscribers. Yay! Thank you so, so, so much for everyone who has subscribed. Um, so for this video, I wanted to make a video about five tips I have to be polite and not offend British people because the Brits have their rules and their, and their protocol and I love them for it but if you don't know it it's gonna be a bad time for you so I thought we could do a quick video and I'll do my top I don't know, six seven tips <laughs> um, for how to be polite in British culture okay so number one number one is not saying sorry um, even if you don't mean it, it's more of just a gesture that you're like taking responsibility in something. Like I apologize to everything, which I think makes me more British than before I even moved here. Like if I bump into a wall or a door, I say sorry. If I get hit by a car, I'll apologize. Like it's, I just first, I've been trained because back in the day when I was at school, they used to say, if you're in a car accident, never say sorry because then you're admitting fault. And so it's like conditioned in me that that's the one time I'm not to say sorry. <laughs> But other than that, you should apologize just to be like if you're walking in the street and you bump each other You both say sorry. It's a nice thing But if you if they say sorry and you don't you'll get an eye roll and a tusk. I tell you um, But yeah, it's just polite to be Considerate and be like, oh, we both did wrong. You know, I don't know. It's just more of a gesture, but highly recommend Apologizing or at least saying sorry That's what they do. They like to apologize. Join in. It's fun. <laughs> Number two is either making a bad cup of tea or telling someone they made a bad cup of tea. Firstly, I need your opinion because someone the other day put the milk in before the hot water in a tea and I was like, what are you doing? As far as I'm aware, I put tea bag in, put some water in and then I put in the right amount of milk so I know the color it's going to turn. Yeah, that's how you make tea. What was this? Am I crazy or is that person wrong? <laughs> like, why would you put, they went, tea bag, milk, water. But following my own advice, I didn't tell them. I didn't say they had a bad cup of tea. Um, <laughs> I just let it go. Um, but yeah, so tea in British culture is important. More so, it's more of an intimate because it's more happens when you're at someone's house or at work and they'll be like, oh, would you like a cup of tea? Cause you were kind of in their place or whatever. And they're like, you say yes. And then if they make you one and you're like, that's a bit rubbish, then like, that's rude. <laughs> Cause they've like gone out of their way to be quite accommodating. Like you should just drink the awful tea and smile and <laughs> be like, thank you for your um, hospitality. People, well, people seem to take the way they make tea quite personally. That's why I didn't mention earlier about the person who did it backwards. I was like, what are you doing? But I can't say anything cause it's like insulting like their family values. <laughs> it's like so ingrained into their, per into their um, world view. I'm like, I don't want to jump and question that, but really tea. Don't question their tea, just smile and drink it. More for Americans, or Australians actually, I don't know. But Brits genuinely like beans on toast. I know it's a weird stereotype, but it's a real one. It's true, and beans on toast is great. And if you don't like it, you haven't tried it in the right scenario, because I might have it for dinner, it's so good. Um, but yes, so beans on toast, amazing. Don't make fun of the stereotype if they're like saying it's gross or whatever. It's just so nice and it's like, if, um, if people went over to their, your culture and was just like, your food sucks, <laughs> do you know what I mean? be polite, don't be a dick, is basically the summary of this video. <laughs> so something interesting the Brits do, obviously they're, they're fairly passive aggressive because that's just the British way of life. If someone says you look tired, it basically means you look like crap. <laughs> so if they're like, mm, you look a bit tired today, it's like, mm, you look like absolute rubbish, you look ill, you look poorly, like what are you doing? Um, that happens in Australia. If I wanted to get out of work and I needed to take a sick day back when I was like first in like, you know, part-time work, um, I would literally just go in with no makeup and then be like, oh, you look, you don't look well. And I'm like, this is my face without makeup, but thanks. <laughs> 
Um, but yes, so that's definitely a thing is that, so if you said to someone, you look tired, but you genuinely meant it authentically and not like a, you look crap, they'll think you're basically telling them that they look like crap. So be careful. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's an issue. They also do, you look well, well, or what is it? You look well, you look rotund. Like they're all different ways of saying like you look fat <laughs> or you look well. Cause like no one says like you look well to a skinny person. It's only if you've put on weight, like you've been, you've been eating well, <laughs> you know? So just be careful on how you word things. Cause they could have ulterior motives. Cause the Brits are passive <laughs> and you don't want to imply the wrong thing. Asking too many questions. Um, Brits don't like them when you ask too many questions. I'm on this boat. I'm happy. And this is one of the reasons I'm glad I moved here is that, you know, when you go into, if you get in a taxi or an Uber and they're just like, so what do you do for work? Where are you going? What about Brexit? Da, da, da. Like, I don't like, unless we're going to be friends in five to 10 years, I don't want to really talk to you. <laughs> Particularly if I'm not going to talk, like know who you are within like half an hour. Like I need, like, I'd rather scroll on my phone than have meaningless small talk. It's painful. Um, so that goes for Uber drivers, goes for uh, salespeople in America. When you go into a store, they're just like, hi, particularly because they hear of accent. They're like, where are you from? What are you doing? Where are you going? How's your holiday? What's the highlight? How long are you here for? Blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh my God, I just wanted to look at this thing. And I'm like, I'm not even gonna come in the store anymore because I can't be bothered with this. <laughs> Oh, I can't be bothered like dodging the salesperson and being like, just let me look at things in peace because I'm not here to BFF. You know, I don't know. It's just like so intense. And, like, it sounds like I'm being a bitch, but like reality is it's like every single store and you're like, I'm just so tired. <laughs> Maybe because I'm an introvert, it's like I save my energy for the people I care about. I'm, like I just don't care about people I'm not friends with. <laughs> also goes for if you're on the tube, which is funny because in London anyway, um, you can be so close because it's so packed and you can't make con eye contact with anyone because you're trying to like avoid everyone. So definitely don't make small talk when you're like this. Um, but also if the cabbage is empty on any train in the UK and someone's sitting down, don't go sit next to them if there's other seats. It's so weird. As a woman, if a guy came and sat next to me and there was other seats in the carriage, I would feel quite threatened, <laughs> which maybe I'm paranoid. I don't know, but that would be scary and or annoying. Like they don't, people are on the train here to like get places. You know, they're not like here to small talk. They're like doing their thing. They're on a mission. Psh, <laughs> let them do their thing. That also goes for the tube is that always, I think I've said this in a few videos, always stand on the left on the escalator. Don't block it because you'll get very angry. Same with the sidewalk, that's just personal for me. It's not a Brit thing, it's a vet thing. Please stand to the side if you're stopping to look at your phone or something. Oh my gosh, I was like trying to go look at the lights at Oxford Street and people were just getting out of the tube and just being like, I'm like, stand to the side till you know where you're going. Like, why are you in the middle of the path? There's about 4,000 people here. Let's all just move. <laughs> so I'm already a Londoner. It's only taken six months. Um, definitely just, be aware of your surroundings and be considerate. Um, my next one is rounds, which is something I'm not too familiar with. I think it's a British thing. Buying a round of drinks. Um, so you normally you'd be like, I'll buy this round and then someone else buys the next round. And so you'll just buy the group you're with. You're like, you buy drinks for everyone rather than just buying your own constantly. Um, it's like a communal thing. And if you don't do that, it's like, socially not well like they're like oh he's not you know he's not playing the game um so you want to be involved in that and you also don't want people to buy you around and then you not reciprocate that like it goes two ways um it's like a social thing i think i'm just not thinking i'm like do i owe someone around i have to take them out <laughs> it's like it makes me nervous but yeah that's a very british thing to like buy everybody at the table a drink and then you end up getting more drinks because you end up getting like however many people at the table's worth of drinks. Um, and everyone has that mate that doesn't do the rounds and they're not well looked upon. So don't be that mate. Now, last but not least on my list is cutting in line. Brits love to queue. Don't cut them off in the queue. No one will say anything, but you'll have like a thousand deadly stares in the back of your head um, if you ever cut someone in queue. Um, 
and a lot of passive aggressive like trying to cut you out like if you've done the wrong thing it's fun to watch the politics play out if you're not in it um but yeah something they take so seriously is like everyone gets a turn wait your turn be respectful be considerate um and yeah so you can see that happen if you did cut in line um you'll get here like behind you and that's about it and an eye roll so if you can put up with it go on and be a dick but i don't recommend it i think you'll have a much better time if you play the game with everybody else so that's it for this video i just wanted to cover off a few of my favorite rules for being polite in the uk tell me some more in the comments below because i know i'm missing some i was just trying to rack my brain for this video and i'm like i know there's more and i was just hitting a wall so you tell me um and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and remember to hit subscribe so i can see you next time thank you so much see you next time bye